staff who have come here to support all of the athletes today. Um, without the support of the faculty and staff, our Bryn Mawr athletes wouldn't be able to balance being scholar athletes with the same ability. And so um, really, we appreciate everything you do for us and would just like to again say um, thank you for all of your support. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Kathy Tierney. I'm the Director of Athletics and Physical Education at Bryn Mawr College. Very proud to be. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome our students, of course, of course, and our faculty and staff, alumni and parents to this wonderful festivities today to celebrate the Alphabet Field. Um, many of my friends accuse me of having a kind of an unusual attraction to fields. So <laughs> when I looked at this field for the first time, I said, wow, what an incredible facility for the Bryn Mawr Scholar Athlete. And uh, today is a celebration of this wonderful work. So I am happy that everybody can join us today. What a fabulous day this is to be able to, you know, just jump up and down on this wonderful turf. This is the first time I've actually walked on it. I came down day after day this summer as the, as the field was being created because my house is right up the hill there and just watched this transformation unfold. But it wasn't until I, I had been away for a couple of weeks the holiday and then I came back and it was done that I really got a sense of the scope and the scale. It's so great to now have a regulation size NCAA regulation size field. <laughs> One final remark. I was just finishing today a meeting of the President's Advisory Council, which is a group of alums, comes to Bryn Mawr twice a year, and is really a kind of think tank for me about how we can take Bryn Mawr to ever greater heights. But they not only think, they also give. They give of their time, they give of their treasure, and they've been big donors and supporters to the renovation of Schwartz as well as to what we were able to do with this field. So a few of them came down to see this dedication today, and I know that all of you are very grateful for their alumni input into the realization of this dream. I'm delighted to be here today and that you now have this for your sports enjoyment here at Bryn Mawr. Thanks so much. This is a wonderful day. Uh, I have the high privilege, really a, a privilege, of telling you uh, something about the woman for whom this field is named. This is the Constance Appleby Field. Constance Appleby brought field hockey to this country at the turn of the 20th century. And Bryn Mawr was fortunate that she was here for 39 years as the Director of Outdoor Sports and Physical Education. She had several titles that kept evolving. Um, her term of office paralleled that of M. Carey Thomas, the second president of this college, who was very influential in its formation. Um, so what was she like? Well, a good many years ago, when I was fortunate to be named to the U.S. team as its goalkeeper, I was playing up at her camp uh, in the Poconos, and I was having uh, one of those days that goalkeepers have. I should have been home reading a book. <laughs> but instead, I was a sieve, and I sensed Miss Appleby walking up the path next to me, and she stopped, and she said, Oh, you're the U.S. goalkeeper. Oh. And then she went on. <laughs> Whereupon I let in five more goals. Uh, so she could be very demanding and very straightforward. But she was also a warm and caring person, and a few years later, when I was president of the Philadelphia Field Hockey Association, uh, Miss Appleby came to our sectional tournament. She was in, well into her 80s, and I presented her with a dozen roses. I have no idea why we thought giving a dozen roses when it was 10 degrees was a good idea, but we did. That seemed appropriate. And she received them just as my three-year-old son broke away from my mother. To describe my son, I would tell you that had he been a firstborn, he would have been an only child. <laughs> Fortunately, buffeted by sisters, came running down the hill, looked at Miss Appleby, and this was a formidable sight. The, she, her hair was white and it was drawn back in a bun, and she had on Ben Franklin glasses, uh, a long black coat, almost to her ankles, 
black shoes and a, a fur collar, which in those days I think was real fur. And she, he gave her a beautiful smile. And she handed me the roses, took his hand, and went off for 30 minutes. Rob has never divulged what they talked about, <laughs> for which I'm eternally grateful. But along with being caring and, and being uh, demanding, she was also a tremendous businesswoman. She authored a magazine called The Sportswoman, which you must go to the archives and read some of the articles in that magazine. She wrote it, she edited it, she circulated it, uh, and she solicited ads to support it. This was in the 20s. This was a woman in the 20s doing this, a tremendous, tremendous act. And the stories are not just about field hockey. It's Gertrude Ederle swimming the English Channel in 1926, or Babe Dietrichson and all her wonderful exploits in track and later, of course, in golf. So what would Miss Appleby think of today? Well, number one, she'd be astounded, absolutely astounded. But she would look for a few minutes and watch what you can do with a soccer ball and a hockey ball on this field and she would approve. So well done, Bryn Mawr. you're back. <laughs>